In this video, you'll learn what the statement of cash flow is and how to prepare it using the direct method. Hey viewers, welcome back to another episode of Accounting Stuff. I'm James and today I would like to introduce you to the cash flow statement. Three weeks ago, I made a video about the accruals basis of accounting and I said something along the lines of the accruals basis of accounting doesn't explicitly track cash flow. So this needs to be calculated separately using the direct or indirect method. After I posted that video, I received a couple of comments from you guys asking me to explain the cash flow statement and the direct and indirect methods. Hence today's video. And don't worry, a lot of people get intimidated by the statement of cash flows, but I promise you, there is really no reason to be. You might have heard the expression, cash is king. Well, in this video, I'm going to explain why the cash flow statement is so important and how to prepare it using the direct method. We are going to cover the direct method first because it's considered to be more valuable to investors or to anyone who reads the cash flow statement. However, many people opt for the indirect method instead. If you stick around with me until the end, I'll explain why. Right, I think that's enough baffing. Let's get started. First, I want to make one thing very clear. Cash and profit are not the same thing. Profit is revenue, less expenses. It's the bottom line on an income statement and relates to a period of time. Whereas you can think of cash as a bank balance at a point in time. Cash and cash equivalents also include physical or petty cash, amongst a few other things although most conventional companies use bank accounts just like you or I might have. I also want to make the point that cash flows are different to cash. Cash flows relate to the amount of cash that has flowed in or out of a business over a period of time. Now that might sound a bit more like profit, but it isn't. When using the accruals basis of accounting, we apply the revenue recognition and matching principles. So that means that revenue is recognized as it's earned, not when cash is received, and expenses are recorded as they are incurred, not when cash is paid out. That means revenue doesn't equal cash in and expenses doesn't equal, don't equal cash out. The biggest reason that small businesses fail is because of poor cash flow management. Many of these businesses would have been profitable, but without having that cash available, they're unable to pay their staff, their creditors, or the interest on their bank loans, and this throttles them. That expression that I mentioned a moment ago, cash is king, is used to emphasize the importance of cash flow, particularly in small businesses. Now, I feel like I'm harping on about this, so it's time to move on, but I can't stress this point enough. It is crucial to keep a track of your cash flows, and we do that using the cash flow statement or statement of cash flows. This is one of the three main financial statements along with the income statement and balance sheet. We have all three of them here made up for a company called Chudley Cannons Incorporated. I apologize for that Harry Potter reference, but I've been re-listening to the audiobooks by Stephen Fryer when I go to bed. And I'm not gonna lie, it's been amazing. I get to dream about sneaking through Hogwarts every night in my invisibility cloak. It's great. Audible's offering a free 30-day trial at the moment, and they have all the books, so you can check them out too. I'll stick a link to it in the description below. But that's enough Harry Potter chat for now. Back to the cash flow statement. The first thing to note is that the cash flow statement covers a period of time, and we put this in the header. Remember I said that cash flows relate to the amount of cash that has flowed in or out of a business over a period of time. Here we have the year ended the 31st of December, but this could easily cover a quarter or a month. I think it's easiest to interpret the cash flow statement by starting at the bottom and working our way back up. At the bottom, we have cash at the start and end of the year, which we get from the balance sheet over here. When we take the difference between these numbers, we get the net increase or decrease in cash for the year. In this case, it's $35,000. This number is key to the statement of cash flows because what we're going to do above is explain how 
and why the cash balance changed over the course of the year. We're going to summarize what cash was spent on and what the sources were and reconcile it all back to this number. And we do this by breaking it all down into three sections. The last section is cash flow from financing activities. Financing activities include changes to share capital, borrowings from a bank or from third parties. Here we have long-term borrowings, which I assume were from Gringotts, the wizarding bank. When a company borrows money, there's a cash inflow, so your cash balance increases. That's the case here, since you can see that we have a cash inflow of $20,000 because the number is positive. But cash can also flow out of a business through financing activities when you pay back a loan or buy back share capital. Above financing activities, we have cash flow from investing activities. Investing activities most commonly relate to the sale or purchase of non-current assets or investments in stocks and shares that sit outside of a business's core operations. When a business invests in non-current assets, cash flows out because we have to pay the suppliers cash for these assets. And on the flip side, when we sell these assets off, cash flows back in. Here, the Chudley Cannons have $15,000 of cash inflow from the sale of PPE, which is shorthand for plant, property and equipment, and $70,000 of cash outflow from the purchase of PPE. They are a Quidditch team, so they might have received the $15,000 by selling off their old broomsticks in order to buy some of those new Nimbus 2001s, which cost them $70,000. This is an investing activity, not an operating activity, because buying and selling broomsticks is not the Chudley Cannon's core business. The broomsticks are long-term investments, which makes them non-current assets. This is different to inventory, which describes assets that are intended to be sold during the ordinary course of business. Which brings us on to the first section of the statement of cash flows, cash flow from operating activities. Operating activities are the principal revenue generating activities of a business. That sounds like a mouthful, but it just means the cash that we receive or pay out during the course of our regular business. Cash comes in when our customers pay us based on our accounts receivable, and cash flows back out when we pay our suppliers based on our accounts payable. Now at the start of the video, I mentioned the direct and indirect methods of preparing a cash flow statement. And I haven't brought them up again until now because everything that we've covered so far is identical under each method. Operating activities is the only section that's different. Today, I'm going to cover the direct method and soon I'll do another video on the indirect method. You can subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out. So, the direct method. Under the direct method, the cash flow from operating activities is laid out just like a cash basis income statement. Under the cash basis of accounting, revenue is recognized when cash is received and expenses are recorded when cash is paid out. When you work out your operating profit under this method, it should match your cash flow from operating activities. Let's check back on the Chudley Cannons. This cash flow statement has been prepared under the direct method so under operating activities, we first have cash receipts from customers of $228,000. The Cannons are a sport team, so I would assume that the majority of these earnings would come from ticket sales and the sale of merchandise. This 228 k of cash in would match their revenue for the same period if they were cash accounting but we can see that their income statement and balance sheet have been prepared under the accrual basis. We know this because their income statement shows depreciation, which is a non-cash transaction. So it wouldn't show up in an income statement prepared under the cash basis. Their balance sheet also contains inventory, receivables and payables, none of which would appear in a cash basis balance sheet. So we've covered cash receipts but the next four lines under the cash flow from operating activities all relate to cash paid out. Cash paid out to suppliers, employees, interest paid and income taxes paid. When you compare this to the income statement, you can see that each line relates to one of the expense types. Cash paid to suppliers relates to cost of sales. Cash paid to employees relates to the salaries expense. Interest paid relates to the interest expense and income taxes paid relates to the income tax expense. There is no depreciation in this cash flow statement because depreciation is a non-cash transaction. 
So that's the three sections of the cash flow statement. And when we subtotal these, we get 70K of cash in from operating activities, 55K of cash out through investing activities, and finally, 20K of cash in from financing activities. If we add all these together, we get a net increase in cash of $35,000, which reconciles back to the movement of the cash balance in the balance sheet. A closing balance of 185K, less the opening balance of 150K, is also $35,000. That's the statement of cash flows prepared under the direct method. It's a really handy report for investors to read over because you can easily identify where cash flowed in and where it flowed out. We can see that 76K was given out to suppliers, which was our biggest cash outflow. It's intuitive, so it's the preferred method of producing a cash flow statement. However, at the start, I said that many people go for the indirect method instead. Now, why is that? The thing is that cash flow from operating activities can be tough to work out using the direct method, particularly for large companies using the accruals basis of accounting. It can be costly and time consuming to gather all the information you need to put it together. The indirect method is an easier alternative, which is why most corporations favor it, even though it's harder for investors to understand. Both methods are allowed under GAAP and IFRS. And although the direct method is preferred, most companies opt for the indirect method instead. How did you guys find that? The cash flow statement can be a hard nut to crack, but I think we packed a lot in there. I think this topic is deserving of two more videos, which I'll put up shortly. In the next one, we'll get our hands dirty as we reproduce this cash flow statement with the direct method from scratch using only the income statement, the balance sheet, and the help of some T accounts. If you want to fully understand this topic, then I highly recommend you check that one out because seeing everything getting pieced together will help make things much clearer. Thanks for watching. If you found this video useful, give it a like, share it, comment, subscribe if you haven't already. I put out new videos every Monday here on Accounting Stuff. See you in the next one.